morning, everyone. Welcome back to Sun Up on Seven. I hope that you enjoyed that Monday Monday morning beef with Jules. If you missed it, you can always go back to our YouTube channel and catch up with everything that Jules had to share about the convention, about talking about child labor, and you know all this nitty gritty his stuff. Too, as and well his with other beef people. with other people. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that. But it's time for our first guest. Here we have Mr. Dylan Vernon, who's Belize's ambassador to the European Union. We're going to be having an interesting conversation, something that's been hitting every corner of the streets, which is Republican, uh, Republicanism. Do we want to be a republic? What are the pros? What are the cons? What does that mean for Belize? Would our money get devalued? Would Guatemala invade? All of these questions are pondering people's minds, so it's time for us to get into it. What an opportune conversation. Mr. Dillon, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the couch. Good How morning, good morning. Uh, I'm feeling well. Um, clarifying, though, that I am not the ambassador right now to the European Union. I was. You were. I was. It's okay, thanks for that clarification. I'm just a citizen uh, operating in, 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 in my own way in Belize right now. Okay. So, I know you're thanks activating for that in that knowledge too as yeah. well, yeah. former. And I'm amazed at how enthusiastic and energetic you all both are in the morning all the time, <laughs> being a night owl myself, so. <laughs> but you, you look like you're energetic. You look like you're mm -hmm. ready for the conversation, so we would never well, know. I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. And, like Kevin has said, this has been a conversation I think a lot of people have been wondering about. They have so much questions. It's just the idea of knowledge. And then people probably research, but there's still stuff like about Guatemala and, you know, the money and all these things that we personally don't know where to look for that research. Mm -hmm. So, great, but let's dive right in. Start off with the basic, basic knowledge of what does it, what does, what does it mean to be a republic? Yes, but before I answer that question, let me say that I was listening to Jules Vasquez um, just now and, and before as he spoke about the, the royal visit. And I really concur um, almost 100% with everything that he says on this issue. Um, I, I've been campaigning um, since the 80s for Belize to become a republic, to replace the queen as head of state. And I think that his, his take is a refreshing, critical approach. Um, what in what has been, I think, a AC over the past week um, of mostly uncritical analysis of, of the whole issue. Um, so thanks to Jules for, for that. Um, and yeah, the, yeah. So the royal with visit. That, yeah, I was going to ask, what, what were your sentiments that you shared with Jules that, um, that he mentioned? Well, I, the fact that, I mean, the, I, th I found the entire visit um, to Belize in 2022 to, to be an insult in the fact that we still have the Queen as our head of state. If they had come as private citizens or when Belize was already a republic, that is fine. But the fact that they came on this royal tour, and royal tours are supposed to uh, basically uh, big up the monarchy and try to maintain uh, the, the remaining um, sort of uh, constitutional monarchies that the Queen has, um, I, I, found, I found it that for me it was a reminder of our need to quickly move to the inevitable Republic of Belize. Mm. And uh, for that reason, I, found, I find Jules' analysis uh, spot on in terms of how we should have looked at the, the whole um, uh, visit. I also think that the biggest and the best thing about the entire visit to me for Belize was the Indian Creek protest. For, for various reasons, yeah. but uh, one, because it, it put the international spotlight on a, on a real contentious issue that is, is now happening, mm -hmm. that I support. And secondly, because it was one of the few things, as Jules said, that uh, showed that Belize is not all goo goo aha for, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for this for royal, royal visit. Yeah. And um, having campaigned for so long for Belize to replace the Queen as head of state, you would understand that personally it was, um, for me, the, the best thing about like, yes, the visit. Yes, they did it, so, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but getting to your question, what is a republic? And, and, and I think this is something that indeed uh, there is a lot of confusion out there about Renata. A republic is, I mean, is defined as a form of government in which the people or the elected representatives form the basis of government, have the power of, of the state. Um, it is on them that power depends. A monarchy and an autocracy are two different things. Um, they, they, they are depending on one person, or in the case of the monarchy, 
hereditary transfer of power. Mm -hmm. Those are not republics. And so at the end of the day, um, a republic means people controlling their own power and government and making their own decisions without any one individual, or uh, in, the, in, in the case of uh, autocracies, one dictator saying what it should be. Um, and so in the case of Barbados, for example, when Barbados in November last year decided to replace the queen, Barbados became a republic by definition because the people decided that that was what they wanted and also because it no longer had the monarch as a foreign country as it had the state. So that, that's basically, um, in the case of our context, what the republic means. But also important to understand is that there are various kinds of republics. Okay. Um, when Barbados became a, a, a republic and replaced the queen, Barbados became what is called a parliamentary republic. So it kept everything else that it had, just like we have now in terms of our system of government, but replaced the queen as head of state with Same a state. Barbadian. And that made it a republic. Okay. Now, nothing else changed in, in, in Barbados, at least yet. They're having a constitutional reform process right now that could result in more changes. Um, Belize could choose just to do that. Um, but the bigger picture for Belize, and I think this is where um, the education needs to be done, is what kind of republic does Belize want to be? Do we want to be a parliamentary republic, just change a figurehead? I think not myself, and I will go into that. Or do we want to really, uh, in, in this constitutional reform process that we have coming up, uh, create a, a, a kind of uh, republic that is uniquely uh, based upon our values, our culture, and will help us achieve our aspirations. And, and sometimes labels are bad, but the, the two sort of options we have, mm -hmm. other than a parliamentary republic, is to become a presidential republic. And that is like the United States of America, uh, and um, there are other, all, most of Latin America are, are presidential republics. Yes. And in fact, that, that's one of the, uh, the negative associations I think Belizeans have, that the banana republics and the Central American republics, uh, at least in the last century, went through uh, processes that um, sometimes were difficult in terms of revolutions and strife and... and they, they associate republic with that, which, which is not what is inaccurate, because it's not whether you're a republic or not that these things happen. Mm -hmm. But um, the presidential republic is basically one in which you directly elect a president. The president shares power with the legislature. There are many checks and balances. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that, that's the main distinction okay. from the republican and um, from the parliamentary republic. Right. And then there's a hybrid of the two. And the hybrid of the two is used by many countries, the Federal Republic of France, or the, um, the French Republic, I should say. In, in our region, the Copa Re Republic of Guyana is also a hybrid. And hybrid usually means um, you have a mix of the two. You, in the case of, say, Guyana, you can have a president and also a prime minister. And, and uh, in the case of Guyana, again, you can have a different approach to electing your government. This is more proportional uh, use of uh, election um, process. And so th those are the, the options we have. But the key point here is that changing the queen as head of state will make us a republic. But that is not enough in perhaps what we want to do with this constitutional process happening, at least from my point of view. If we were simply to, to move like Barbados did, and replace the Queen as head of state and then become a republic, I think we will be missing an opportunity that this, this sort of atmosphere now is, is creating, especially with the royal visit, to, to do what we didn't do in 1981 and what we didn't do in 2000 when we had the Political Reform Commission, that is to really create our own constitution that we as a people 
think about, we consult about, we talk about, and create the best constitution we can for Belize. And part of that constitution for me, and a small part of it would be replacing the Queen as head of state, but other aspects of it would have to be how do we deal with some of these governance issues that have been plaguing us since independence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we have in this constitution that we inherited from, um, well, the blueprint at least came from the United Kingdom. It's basically not something created by the Belizean people. This is something that uh, the countries of the Caribbean were, were given as a blueprint by the British when we became independent because of how independence happened for us, the Guatemalan claim and the division. Um, we didn't have the moment in 1981 to, to really think about what constitution we wanted. Right. And so 40 years later, we're still after using. missing the opportunity once, let us not miss it again and uh, have this, this whole replacing the queen thing yeah. as being just a small part of what we need to do. Yeah. Um, Dylan, I, so thank, thank you for, for giving us that definition of like, or the many aspects of what being a republic can be like or what it can look, look like. And I, I, I appreciate that you gave it in the context with Barbados having one system and Guyana having another because it gives us an awareness of like, there can be different ways how we incorporate being a republic. Um, what I'm also gathering is that there needs to be a process for us to get there, right? So, and you're mentioning consultation and education is very key in, in, in getting to that spot where we're going to be like, okay, this is where we want to be. Um, but also with that, I feel it's addressing people's fears as to what it can mean by removing the, the queen as, as a head of state. And one thing we were chatting about is that if the queen is removed, how does that translate into our currency and the value of our money? That's one thing that's out there on the We're street. We're going to go on our money. And then the other thing is like, will Guatemala invade Belize? Because apparently, as, as how people present it, is the fact that we still have the, the, the queen as the head of state, it's kind of like preventing the, the Guatemalan invasion, if we, if we can say that. What are your, your thoughts on, on, on that? Good questions, because um, indeed, in, in reviewing commentary on on uh, what people have been talking about over the past week and a half, that has come up. This, this, this fear of security, if, they, if we became a republic vis-a-vis -vis the Guatemalan claim and, and the issue of the, the queen um, on our money. And, and then your last question, which I'll answer, is yeah, how do we get there? Um, I think that the, the queen on the money issue is, is simple. It, ha it will have no effect on the value of the money if we became a republic. Clearly, the, the, the Queen's uh, picture will have to be replaced by, by others, by somebody else. We have national heroes, too. And if you look at, um, in, in fact, Jamaica took the Queen off their dollar uh, before they became a, a republic. They're not even a republic yet. And so it will have no, no meaningful effect. I think okay. it's, it's an example of what I call um, some of the psychological remnants of colonial mentalities <laughs> that yeah, we, we, we see this as somehow uh, having yeah. value that it does not have. But the more, I think, um, interesting uh, concern that people have that needs addressing because it is there is will the Guatemalan, will the Guatemalan claim and any uh, sort of right possibilities of invasion be something we should uh, be concerned about? in vis-a-vis vis -vis, uh, replacing the queen as head of state? And the answer is emphatically no. And it only, let, let me make three points there. One is that um, the, the, the possibility of an invasion uh, right now is, is so far-fetched in that, um, and I think it always has been over the past few years, but even more so now that the claim on the agreement of both countries is at the ICJ for peaceful and binding resolution. And um, I mean, also we just have to look at what's happening um, in the Ukraine to know that uh, political sanctions and economic and financial sanctions um, do, do work. And I, I, I think that even having said that, people still have some fear. But if we then ask the question, um, will the British defend us if there was an invasion? Why, why do we think so? In 1993, the British left Belize as a defensive force. And that so-called defense guarantee, one they never wanted to give, 
um, was, was one that um, ended in 1993, and the British were, were eager to get out. And since then, we've had a batch sub uh, sort of small training uh, facility here, and um, it might give some people some inferred sense of security. But if there was an invasion tomorrow, it is you and I, Renetta, Kevin, and, and, and the BDF, and, and all the legions who would be the first defenders of our country. So this dependent upon uh, this sort of psychological, I think, feeling that the British would defend us because the, um, the Queen as head of state doesn't make any sense. And that's the last point. What was this, does a Queen of head of state have to do in the case of an, an invasion, whether the British decide to defend us or not? It doesn't make any sense. If we became a republic, mm -hmm. do you think that the, the British will spitefully uh, say, well, we are going to withdraw our batch sub training group and we're going to withdraw our high commission or development aid? I mean, that is ridiculous, I think, to even contemplate. And if you don't believe me, and I've asked the British themselves, but uh, even I think I heard um, Prince William say um, just last week in the Bahamas that, and after that, um, that he and the monarchy supports the decisions yes. that uh, other countries want to make in, in this regard. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that that fear that some Belizeans have, the security fear, is one that is unwarranted and is based on false assumptions. I, I, I would okay. urge Belizeans to relax on that one. The, the fact that the Queen is not our head of state uh, when that ever comes around, and I hope quickly, will not have an effect on how our relations with the British transpire, tran, uh, transpires or how our membership in the Commonwealth uh, uh, is affected. We will remain in the Commonwealth of Nations as does almost every country that has uh, been a former colony of the um, United Kingdom. Yeah. Kingdom. And so um, I... I I, I think that we should not worry about that. And finally, how we get there is we have this now, um, what I would call a ready-made mechanism that the government has announced, the People's Constitutional Commission, mm -hmm. which is about to be launched. Um, yes. It's a bit delayed from my perspective because it was spoken about from last July, but um, the governance unit, I understand, is now up and running. But this process, um, the way it's being envisioned is that it will be consulting Belizeans nationwide mm -hmm. for uh, getting views on what should be amended in our constitution or if we want a new constitution. And that process is where um, the discussion of if we should become a republic <coughs> and what kind of a republic will come up. And so I, I, I want to, I mean, how, how this process takes place, how it's organized will be important. Um, yeah. But I want to urge Belizeans um, to begin to think about this upcoming constitutional reform process, to get informed and to participate in it fully, because this would be once in a lifetime opportunity to um, create this uh, constitution, this living yeah. document that um, speaks to our values, principles, and aspirations, yeah. and uh, can be a, a living instrument for our yeah. uh, informing our policies and uh, guiding our development in the future. Yeah. And urge Belizean support to be in that. And Mr. Brennan, on too. that same note, I want to ask, because we've been talking a lot about the good that comes from it, the change of mentality, kind of pushing out the fear of security from the British and all these different things you've been touching base on but some people will say I know moving to our republic can't be so beautiful and a cup of tea and rainbows and sprinkles what would be at least one or two th problems or um, cons that come with Belize going into the realm of being republic you know I, I can't think of any in terms of replacing the queen I mean that that is that is for me something that is inevit inevitable and uh, that would, that would happen. If that was the only thing we did, um, I don't think there would be anything that changes, really, as other countries have experienced. Um, I think the question more becomes what kind of republican system we choose. 
and there are pros and cons between a parliamentary okay. republic uh -huh. and a presidential republic and hybrid republics. And these pros and cons have to do with what values and principles we as the people want to aspire to in our constitution. And I mean, to give you an example, in, in, in parliamentary republics, we have almost a dictatorship of the cabinet, where the cabinet and the prime minister can do whatever they want and make practically any decision they want. If there's a law that allows it, they do it. If the law doesn't allow it, you change the law or you make a new law. I mean, it's a dictatorship of, of cabinet. Okay. Um, and so strong government comes from parliamentary democracies as well as the very divisive governments where uh, there's tribal competition for power, but also the opposition has zero role and zero power, even if they get 50% of the vote. Um, in presidential republics, we have a situation where the president is less powerful than the prime minister because the legislature, as in the case of the United States, has almost a balance on the presidential power. So there's more of a check and balance and a sharing okay. of powers. Yeah. Um, but some would say that in that system, you would have sometimes um, stagnancy where both sides are unable to come up with uh, a decision because they're, they're struggling with each other for power, especially if you have a Republican president, for example, and a Democratic House, in, in the case of the U.S., it's reversed now um, in terms of uh, the United States. But um, we, we, we can, I mean, this would be, I think, one of the things that the, the, uh, politi the People's Constitutional Commission does, looking at these pros and cons in, 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 a, in a very deep and in a comprehensive way and coming up with what is the best system for us. And, and I think that one of the things I want also to, to leave with is let us not, um, as we do this process, uh, think that we have to choose some model of some other country because we have the, the luxury of knowing the pros and cons of, uh, of them, knowing our own context and coming up with what is fit for purpose for us yeah. to create our own That's constitution that yeah. works for us. But um, I think that an exciting uh, sort of period of time is coming up in the next year and a half, two years, with another opportunity, uh, the second one, I think, after independence, to, to really create a new Belizean constitution. I like that. That includes in it removing the queen as head of state but not as the most important thing, but as a key thing. Yeah. I, like I love that. that. Thank yeah. you so much, Mr. Vernon, for being here and for enriching us with just the knowledge of what it means to be a republic of different types. And your final words of, we need to understand that we, we can look at other countries and see what they do, but Belize needs to come up with what works for them. I think that's really important because sometimes we tend to model other countries and think what works for them will work for us, but we need to look at our own context. And the idea as well as, Dashing away the constitution that was never really our constitution, but we're just giving to us and say, huh, deal with this and try bringing our own value structures into place because I think that is something that we really need to govern ourselves. So really appreciating this conversation. I'm sure a lot of viewers out there are blown away, understanding, a little bit more comforted to understand, you know, the security issues, the money issues, all these things that they've been wondering, what does this mean? But You've really answered a lot of questions for people out there. And so thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I, I think that we will have a lot more of these conversations yes, in the coming definitely. year because of the process that is, that mm -hmm. is happening. And, and one last thing, uh, if for those who don't like the word republic, when we become a republic, we do not have to call ourselves the Republic of Belize. We can still just be Belize. That's what Barbados did. Uh, uh, we don't have to, to use the name if the, the name itself is so offensive to people. <laughs> but I, I will end there. Well, thank you. And thanks for that knowledge, that knowledge, uh, knowledge too, as well, because I think people are like, I don't want to be the Republic of Belize. I don't like how that sounds. Yeah. But <laughs> there are options, people. It's about research, understanding, and of course, the campaign that's supposed to come, the commission that's going to be able to enrich our minds and answer the pros and cons of the different types of republic and what it means for Belize is on its way as well. So stay tuned for those conversations. Be a part of it. And of course, here at Sanam, we will be giving you all the scoops into those conversations and topics as well.
And with that, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking about an event scheduled for April 1st and 2nd with Niche. So stay tuned for that exciting conversation. We'll be right back. <laughs> 